Hello and welcome to this second tutorial on transforms where we're going to learn how to create pips picture in pictures by animating some of these effects these transform effects that are automatically applied now this is where we left it in the last tutorial and, and as you remember we have an option to be able to reset these things so I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to click this reset arrow to reset it to its full extent and I'm going to reset opacity and there's a keyframe there that I don't want so I'm going to select that keyframe and hit delete right so now we have everything exactly as it was now if I was to pull my current time indicator along here please notice that up in the effects control panel that clip is also being shown and the current time indicator is moving in concert with the main body one down in the timeline so the two are linked so that when I create keyframes up here they're going to be in the same proportion down here. Now how do we get these transforms? Well if you remember from the last tutorial transforms are automatically applied to any clip we use in the project. We don't need to go over here to the effects panel to find effects that we apply. These effects are automatically applied and they consist of the motion ones which are position, scale, rotation, anchor point and the anti-flicker filter which is actually a filter not so much of an effect which um, can be used to reduce the flicker of an item if it's shown on an interlaced television screen. And we also have the opacity effect. And I'd like you to notice that the stopwatch has already been applied to the opacity transform, meaning that this is ready for animation. But there are no keyframes here. I can't see anything in my effects control. Incidentally, if you can't see this bit and it's hidden, there's a little two-way arrow here that you click to show click to hide, click to show, click to hide. So make sure you can see this bit for the bit of work that we're going to do. I need to create a keyframe to say be this value at this time because animation is about changing the value over time. So at the beginning of this clip I want you to be at 100%. I don't need to click the stopwatch to say start, it's already done, but I do need to create a keyframe. And how do I do that? Simple. I just click this little icon that says Add Remove Keyframe. Click on there, and a keyframe has been created. Now if I go forward a little bit, just a few seconds, and I say I want this to fade out to zero, I pull this all the way down to zero so that I can't see it at all, totally transparent. And now, over that period of time, it starts at totally opaque, and it goes to completely transparent over time. So as I push my spacebar over time, it disappears. I have created animation. Now I don't actually want that, so I'm gonna control Z a couple of times. But do bear in mind that opacity comes with a stopwatch clicked. If I want to change any of these other values and I want them to animate, I have to actually click the stopwatch itself. But this clip here is not the one I want to animate. This is my bed, this is my background. I want to pull in another clip that I can animate over the top to create picture in picture. This is a picture moving over the top of another picture. So let's take something that looks fairly interesting. We've got 3DC here, so click and drag 3DC and put it in, say, video channel 2 and have a little look at that over the top. Up, oh, I can't see it because the eyeball's turned off, so I'm actually gonna turn on the eyeball for all of these different channels, for whatever I might bring in. So at the moment, I've got this lovely C view, but it's completely obscuring the layer below. But if I click on that layer, I get transforms for that layer. Please note, that previously, I had the soft focus C selected, and I had all these transforms. And it's very tempting to think that by dragging in 3DC, it would have automatically selected those transforms and I can change them. It didn't. It left it at the original clip. You must select the clip that you want to animate. So we want to animate 3DC. We want to change its position, its scale, whatever we want to do. So I need to click on the layer that I want to change and then go to the effects controls and open up the motion. I'm not going to change opacity on this one, not at the moment, but I am going to change its position and its scale. Now, I want to change its scale, but I don't want to animate it. I just want to set a scale. So if I want to set a scale, all I need to do is drag down this fader, say to 33%. 
So that's now 33% or a third of the original size. But what I want to do now is I want to animate it over time. Now to do that, I need to change its position. So the first thing I need to do is get it to its starting point before I do any stopwatches or anything else like that. I could start to scrub it left and right, but that's quite hard work. The easiest way is to click on the word motion or the little icon beside it, and then the clip is available to me in my program monitor, and I can click and drag and take it to the place I want it to start. I want it to start just there. Now, I'm at the beginning of my timeline, right at the beginning, and I want the position over five seconds of this particular clip to move over to this side of the screen. How do I do that? I have to enable animation. And you enable animation, as we talked before, by clicking the stopwatch. So click the stopwatch, and it says, OK, I'm ready to animate. And what's more, I'm going to put the first keyframe in, which means it remembers that at this point in time, this clip must be here. Now I go forward my five seconds. I can go wherever I want. I'm going to put my current time indicator there, five seconds. It's easier to see than up here. And then I want to move it to where I want it to finish after five seconds. And if I want it to stay in a straight line, this is the time when I might actually scrub. So I start to scrub, and if it doesn't go quickly enough, hold the Shift key, and you'll find that it scrubs a heck of a lot quicker. So for very fast movement, hold the Shift key, and for very fine movement, hold the Control or the Command key, and drag, and you'll find it moves little by little. So holding the Shift key, I can shift it right across very quickly. That's where I want it to finish and notice that another keyframe has been created. So that if I now move my current time indicator from 0 to 5 seconds, I have created an animating picture in picture. But actually, I want this to fade on, and I want it to fade off. I don't want it to carry on going beyond that point. So what do I want to do? The first thing I need to do is actually trim my clip back to the length I want it to be. I don't need all of this here, so I can simply go to the end till I get my trim tool and just trim and pull it all the way back until it snaps to the line, to the current time indicator. If it doesn't snap, by the way, you might have the snap tool turned off. If you have the snap tool turned on, it will snap to where your current time indicator is. So the first thing is that is now only going to go on for the five seconds and then disappear. But I might want it to fade on and fade off. I can do that in two ways. I can either animate the opacity so let's do one with opacity. I'm just going to zoom in so you can actually see it down here. So to animate the opacity, I've already got my stopwatch, but I've got no keyframes. What I might want to say is at the beginning, I want it, I click the keyframe, and now I'm over it, I can drag that down to zero. I want it invisible. And then I just want to go forward a very little bit, and then I can drag that up to 100%. Up it comes. And then I can go out to just before the five second value there, and I can click another keyframe. So what I'm saying by clicking another keyframe is you must still be 100% at this point. You can't change. So I said you're 100% here. And over this time, you must still be 100% here. And I can go to the end of my clip, which as you can see is just here with this stopwatch. And I can take that down to zero. And I've now created a fade in and fade out. So if I hit my space bar to play, fades in, goes across the screen and fades out. Another way of doing a very similar thing, I'm going to take this to 100% and I'm going to turn the stopwatch off actually so that this is now at 100%. Gives me a warning by the way, it says this action will delete existing keyframes. Do you want to continue? Always notice this sign because it will get rid of every single keyframe you have created. So only ever hit the stopwatch again if you truly want to get rid of all of the keyframes, which I happen to want to do. So I click OK. So all the keyframes for opacity have now gone. It doesn't fade in doesn't fade out. But what I could have done is I could have gone to my video transitions and I could have gone to my dissolve and I could have gone to cross dissolve and put that on the front and that would have had a similar effect of bringing it in. I take cross dissolve and drop it on the end of my clip and let go and what we'll find is it achieves the same thing fade out. So another way of doing it, in fact a far quicker way of doing it, would have been to use a transition. Dissolve in, dissolve out. Now obviously you can animate any of these things. So I could if I wanted have it at the beginning, so right at the beginning and I can say okay let's animate scale. 
and let's take the scale right the way down to zero so I can't actually see it and then by the time it comes in I want it to be up at 33 percent and then right the way to the end I'd like it to go all the way up to say 60 percent or 66 percent so now let's look at our animation so it sort of fades in and continues to grow bigger and bigger and bigger until it disappears and all I needed to do was click the stopwatch and start to create my keyframes so that's how I can create picture in picture and of course you can bring in as many of these individual items as you like and you can have as many picture in pictures as you want to use one final thing there are presets to achieve this without having to use these motion controls using the motion controls is really important because you need to understand how you can use them so that you can modify one of the presets that will do a job very quickly for you so let's take something entirely different let's take kids playing in surf and drop it on any layer we like so there's kids playing in surf now what we want to do is we want to use one of the preset picture in pictures to do all this work for us so I'm going to select the layer there's my effects controls I'm not going to touch those at the moment I'm going to go to my effects panel and then open up the category called presets and look for this little category called pips picture in pictures I can open that up and it's got an option that says 25% pips and you can open them up and it says 25% lower left lower right motion upper left upper right so if I quickly select one of the lower lefts you can see that it's given me lots of descriptions that's just lower left it says scale down from full so let's take that one just click drag and drop it on now if I pull my current time indicator through you'll see that it starts to scale down from full so that's a pip that's been applied and you want to see what it's done all you need to do is open up your motion tab here and you'll see that it's animated position and scale and you can actually see what the animation points are but one of the mistakes I've made is that I've left the full length of the clip in there so that it has animated over the full length of the clip so if we do control Z to undo that and we change the length of this again to five seconds or so and now I'll choose another one say pip 25% scale up to full click drag and drop it on there you'll see again that animation has been applied and what we'll find is if I click and play it's going to go all the way up to full scale over the five seconds because it will do it over the full length of the clip okay so that's how you can apply them and of course you can change them okay so if you want to change its starting point you need to be over the keyframe at the beginning then you can physically start it from a totally different place and it will work let me demonstrate by pulling it across if however I was to change it when I wasn't over a keyframe so just a little way off and pull it what I've actually done I don't know if you can see that is I've created a different animation path I've added an extra keyframe in and it's going to look really weird I hit my spacebar to play and it does this sudden drop so if you want to change a keyframe it's really important that you are over the one that you actually want to change so now that I'm actually over my final keyframe if I actually physically wanted to change that I could change it grab it and move it okay so that's how you can animate your transforms and you can apply your transforms and create interesting pictures in pictures one last thing to say sometimes if you have got an awful lot of pictures in pictures and you've got something like AVC HD you could find that your computer struggles unless you've got a really powerful computer because with something like AVC HD it has to uncompress and recompress to play it back so if you've got lots of layers of AVC HD all moving around it's got to cope with the compression problems the animation problems and the display problems and what you might find is that you can't see it or your computer stutters to a halt if that's the case what you need to do is animate one layer at a time and make sure it works and then turn it off and then do a pre-render or something for the final one just to have a little look one other thing that you possibly could do is go to your program monitor click on the panel menu and go down to playback resolution and go from full or a half down to maybe a quarter or an eighth 
and if you do that there's a good chance you'll get a good idea of how it should look when it's finally rendered just because you have this at a lower level will not affect your final render this is just for viewing purposes on your computer only my name's Andrew Devis thank you for watching Thank you.